I had a friend talk to me about miracles. Why does God do miracles? Are miracles real? Why would God give miracles if they're real to certain people and not other people? What's up with that? Good morning and welcome to John chapter 2 verse 1 through 11 where Jesus goes to a wedding. His mother tells him, can you do the thing? And he's like, it's not my time to do the thing. And she's like, you're ready. You can do the thing. Um, Jesus instructs people to fill in some jugs of water and then he prays over the water and it turns into wine. That's a miracle. It's something supernatural that has happened that doesn't have any explanation. I mean, I could understand if we had some wine in the jars already and maybe if we mixed water into them and over time it all fermented, that would make more sense. But that's not what happened. Immediately, these empty jugs were filled with water, just water. It turns into wine. And why was it so important for Jesus to turn water into wine and not heal someone maybe. It seems like in the Bible, miracles are, they show up for a particular reason. When I read John 2, chapter 1 through 11, on the third day, there was a wedding and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus was also invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come because like I'm a guest. <laughs> His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. They took it. When the master of the feast tasted the water, now could become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first. And when the people are all drunk, then they serve the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This, the first of his signs, Jesus did in Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed him. One thing that I noticed is that in the Bible they're calling miracles signs and what are these miracles signs of? It says that after Jesus did this the disciples believed in him. Now these were disciples that were new to Jesus. They were they they hadn't had this three-year journey yet. They literally just met and it seems that the signs was an evidence to show them, hey, this is who I am. When Moses goes to Egypt to have Pharaoh let the Israelites go, one of the signs or miracles that occurred is Moses dipped his staff into the Nile River and it turned into blood. That was a sign to show that his God was God. Now, during that time, the Nile River was seen as a deity. It was seen as a source of life. And the people really believed that the Nile was God. Miracles were not happening haphazardly. They had a significant purpose. There was a greater purpose that had to be fulfilled when these miracles were performed. So after Jesus performs this miracle at the wedding, Jesus goes back to where the wedding occurred and he meets this nobleman. Jesus comes again to Cana in Galilee where he made the water wine. There was an official whose son was ill. When this man heard that Jesus had come from Judah to Galilee, he went to him and asked him to calm down and heal his son for he was at the point of death. So Jesus said to him, unless you see signs and wonders, you do not believe. So Jesus is saying, you won't believe in me unless you see a miracle. The official said to him, sir, come down before my child dies. And Jesus said to him, go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went on his way. The father knew that was the hour when Jesus had said to him, your son will live. And he himself believed and all his household. This was now the second sign that Jesus did when he had come from Judea to Galilee. And as he was on his way, his son was healed. He gets home a day later and the people at his, home, at his house tells him that, oh yeah, your son is fine now. And he asks, what time did he start feeling better? And they give him the time that was around the time he asked Jesus to heal his son. Isn't that crazy? It wasn't just that someone needed their son to be healed. Jesus was able to accomplish multiple things by performing that one miracle. He was able to not only have this man believe that he was God, but all everyone else in his household 
now believe. Well, the actual miracle itself was not the only thing that was accomplished. Others have performed miracles. Different people perform miracles. It doesn't mean that it's from God. The way that Jesus said, your son will live, literally meant he's alive, like he's going to live. It seems that a lot of times we ask God for miracles. Is it possible that the miracle that you're asking for does not fulfill Jesus's criterion? Is it possible that the miracle that you're asking for or that you're expecting does not fall under the will of God? We have to ask ourselves, do we prefer a miracle that we've thought of over the will of God and over the, the different things that he can accomplish through doing that miracle or not doing that miracle? If you can imagine, if you're asking for someone to be healed. But what if in God's infinite wisdom, or he through that sickness will, ins will have someone become a doctor to heal that particular disease for hundreds and hundreds to come. He, through that sickness, will save somebody else. We don't know. We are limited. And all we can see is what we want. Just something to think about.